Hey plant friends, welcome, welcome to, to our, our home. home. Bloom and grow, YouTube show. All right plant friends, you have asked for a home tour of our tiny apartment that you hear so much about <laughs> on the Bloom and Grow radio podcast, our 500 square feet. Honestly, I feel like we're lucky if this is actually 500 square feet. Yeah, there's no way it's 500. I think I overshot it. <laughs> um, but we have some news that we are actually moving and it is time to depart. It's kind of sad. The place where Bloom and Grow was created and yeah. our first home. This is like our little planty love nest. Yeah. So we wanted to give you a little tour. So Billy, what what are your favorite aspects of the apartment and your kind of thoughts on the growth of the place going from no plants? If you we were looking back at some old photos of the apartment before I turned into a plant lady and there were no plants in it. Yeah. And now there's so many plants. <laughs> That's all been Maria. Uh, it's been really nice. I started out uh, with the majority of the things because I lived in a bigger apartment in Massachusetts before coming in here. And uh, Maria started off with plants just as like a little bit of warmth, a little bit of a sort of a little bit of your touch. Mm -hmm. And it went from that to a million miles an hour and plants everywhere. And that I was shocked by how happy they made me. It was really one of those things that the first time I came in and I could just feel the air was different and like it, it was almost like fresher in a way and things smelled alive as opposed to just wood and metal and all of the things that I traditionally had uh, it became more of a home so uh, it's a little sad it's a little sad it's a little like kind of tough to be thinking about all right yeah. we're gonna leave this spot but um, on to bigger and better and uh, and also you know thank you to everybody who listens to bloom and grow and watches the show because all of this wouldn't be possible without you guys I mean all of her passion would not have been possible to really take root and grow the way that it has without uh, as many passionate people as have been listening to the show. Did he just do a plant pun? I did do a plant <laughs> pun, and I realized it as he was coming out of my mouth, okay. but okay, cool. I, I feel bad about it, but all right. I think it's been interesting. You know, as plant parents, we've definitely gone through phases where I've gone too crazy, and then we've had to like go on a plant pause, and then, you know, we've had to slowly be able to reintroduce plants into the space again. Plant pauses never work. It worked ever, for a little bit. Ever, it ever, worked, ever. It worked for a little bit. There's also been, yeah, like, like we were talking about the 500 square feet, there's also been a gross exaggeration or under exaggeration of how many plants were actually in this house. Many of you heard the number 60 thrown around. That hadn't been true for multiple months. We're clocking in around 160 right now. There was a moment where we had 60 plants it's, in the apartment. There was. It was a fleeting moment, <laughs> but it was a moment nonetheless. Uh, but it really has, It. I mean, it hasn't been bad. And for me to be able to come in and realize just how great these plants were really are and who have learned uh, unexpectedly about plants has been really really wonderful. Um, what's your favorite plant in the entire collection? Oh my god, uh, I found a fiddle leaf fig, like little teeny tiny plant in a Christmas market right after I learned what a fiddle leaf fig was mm -hmm. uh, and I got it for like five or ten bucks and I'm ecstatic about it because as it continues to grow I just keep feeling like I like I got lucky like I got a bargain and, uh, and it's Here, also let really me go grab it. it's been awesome. Off your skin. Fiddly fig. And now look at him. He's huge. He was this big when I got him. He was like this big and his yep. leaves were like this big. He was a little tip cutting when Billy got him. Yeah. And then we put him under our grow light and he's grown the most enormous leaves. They really do thrive in, in high light. So we yeah, love you, been, Figaro. It's been really great. And this guy's coming with us as are so many of these other plants. And at this point now, I'm very attached to all of them. You really are. So... We've got we've gone through the plants to say like okay you want to give this one away you want to give this one I away I said no to all of it and you don't want to give any of the plants yeah, away except for one fern that had kind of pissed me off but yeah it's we, pretty we don't much hold it against it. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right well I'm gonna take you plant friends on a tour of all of the planty nooks so see you in a minute Billy see you soon. Okay, plant friends, so we are standing in our living room, dining room, kitchen, office area. Um, this apartment, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. It's open format, which is what we love, but it also means that a few things. So if you notice, we only have windows on one side of our apartment. They are gorgeous, unobstructed, southern facing windows, which gets a lot of light. But something that I had to learn early on was I thought that bright indirect light meant like I'm standing here. I thought this was, you know, bright indirect light, even though I'm still so far from those southern windows. So I'm learning that if you're going to notice, I have nooks of the apartment where most of the plants are, and that's pretty much 
close to the windows because we're really only in bright and direct light till about here and then we're kind of in low light the farther away from the windows we get obviously and that's a lesson I learned the hard way. <laughs> so another thing about our apartment, we have a lot of plants as you're gonna see, but I really try to focus on hardy, easy care plants. So I'm not a crazy collector. I don't have a lot of rare species. I have a lot of snake plants. I have um, too many monstera, a lot of pothos, a lot of philodendron, stuff that I know is gonna be hardy enough that I don't have to be constantly uh, taking care of it. So. I have different corners of the apartment where I've put a lot of plants around grow lights, the kitchen nook, the grow wall, the living room corner, and my bedroom. So I'm going to take you to each little nook and show you some of my favorite plants in each area. Okay, so this is probably my best kept secret and my most proud tiny house, tiny apartment, New York City living tip. So once I moved back from tour, I needed a space that I could do bloom and grow and I could do my own podcasting, blogging, working, editing. So our apartment is obviously too small for us to have two desks. So plant friends, this is my desk. <gasps> oh my gosh. Isn't this cool? So it obviously hooks into the wall but all of this storage I keep all of my crystals I've collected so many crystals from all of my traveling so this is part of my routine I open the desk and then I take out my very special coaster Frida Kahlo but she's an owl I found it at the Union Square Christmas market one year um, but you know Frida Kahlo an amazing plant lady so she hangs out with me every day and this is where I do my work. This is the Bloom and Grow headquarters. And then at the end of the day, every day, I put everything away. I've got all my pens, all my things that I need, all my papers. And then I just stow it away. Tiny house living. When we initially moved into the apartment, I was like, this is our tiny house. I kind of always wanted a tiny house. And I was like, we're getting the tiny house experience. And now we've had it, and in my next apartment, I'm really ready to have a desk that doesn't open from the wall. <laughs> so this is, I think, the plantiest corner. I say that my Facebook group for Blooming Girl Radio is the plantiest corner of the internet. I feel like this is the plantiest corner of the house. We turned our low light corner into a highlight healing area for some plants that were resuscitating um, with two Soltec Solutions lights, which I've strung up and macramed their cords to help the cords blend in a little bit and kind of give it that boho look. So, some of my favorite plants, I mean, this is, this Monstera is so big. <laughs> it's growing like crazy. Look at all of these. At one point I was thinking I was going to use all of the leaves as in my bouquet, in my bridesmaid's bouquet for my wedding. Um, we have the first plants that I ever got. These jade were some of the first plants I bought that sat in this window they love the southern facing light this is another cutting that i got at a plant swap once again it was tiny and now it's a full plant that blooms the most gorgeous coral blooms my friend uh, my future sister-in-law gave me these pots they say bloom plant grow but i flipped the pot and i wrote and <laughs> with the bloom and grow text to kind of make them specific to me um in the corner, right now we're using this as like a plant resuscitation area because we have such high light. I have a snake plant in the back that I don't know what happened. I divided it and the roots didn't take really. So um, it was really struggling. As you can see, some of the leaves are toppling over. So I stuck them under this high light and there's all sorts of new growth in the middle of the plant. And then this is limey. Our citrus grove, Limey the Lime Tree, he has had such a tough year. Um, him and Lemony Snicket, who unfortunately succumbed and made it into the compost pile, they both got spider mites a couple years ago and just haven't bounced back. So Limey went through some leaf drop, but he has so much new growth. So we're feeling really good and we're actually going to put him outdoors this summer and see if that kind of helps him get his strength back. Um, more snake plants and then my favorite little planter that I picked up this was a planter where Billy and I got engaged we went to the W Punta Mita um, for vacation that's where he proposed and these planters were all over the resort and I was obsessed with them everywhere we went I was just like looking at them and taking pictures and Billy thought I was so weird so I loved the planter so much I just went up to the front desk and I said hey 
can I buy one of those planters? Are those for sale? And they're like, you know what? They're not for sale, but I'll ask my manager. We cut a deal and I ended up buying one. And it's such a beautiful memory from an amazing vacation, obviously, when we got engaged. Um, and as I traveled, that was another tip that I offer people because I was traveling so much last year. I couldn't necessarily buy plants in the plant shops that I was going to, but I could buy pots. So I actually have a lot of pots in my apartment are from different cities. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is this epic plant. This was at a WeWork. This plant was at a WeWork and it was a large plant that I took a cutting of and maybe it was like this, it was like half of this long. But I like stole this cutting from the WeWork that I was in because I was so obsessed with this plant. I brought it home, I planted it up, and this plant loves this southern. This is southern, but I think the angle that it's on, it gets that, um, that's southeast, so I think it's getting a lot of that morning east, eastern light. And it has just, I mean, I have cut this thing off the bottom and rooted it and given it to friends so many times I can't even count. Like, this plant lives on in so many apartments <laughs> across New York City and really the country because I've sent them to friends too. Um, but God, this lemon lime philodendron is just such a prolific grower and it's such a great plant. And once again, another cutting that I got for free that I've turned into a really epic plant that looks really nice. Okay, so if you have ever listened to mostly any episode on the Bloom Girl Radio podcast, you have heard about my tiny Juliet balcony garden, which stands behind this door. It is nine square feet, plant friends. If I can grow food on nine square feet, you can grow food wherever your outdoor space is, I promise. Um, but Bloom and Grow Radio really came to be because of this nine square feet. So the whole story is I'm a plant killer turned plant lady, and I decided to give plants one more try one summer with this balcony, our first year living here, I said, how can I not try and grow some herbs? So with daily calls to my mom and countless Google searches, I pulled myself out of plant killerdom into plant ladydom and this herb garden and little tomato plant that we had thrived and it was such an empowering experience and because the outdoor plants thrived, it empowered me to try indoor plants again and that's where we've got this epic indoor jungle of, you know, 160 plus plants in our apartment. So I'm very thankful to this balcony garden, but I don't think that the Bloom and Grow community really understands exactly how small it is and exactly what I have to do to get my morning meditation. Because a big part of what changed me into a plant lady is realizing that I could use plants as a way to disconnect from the internet, from my cell phone, and reconnect with nature, and then reconnect with myself. So this is it. This is not glamorous. This is not, <laughs> this is not probably what you think, but this is what I do every morning. I come, I sit, I write in my journal, I write three things I'm thankful for, and then sometimes I write to my, it, my intuition, sometimes I just kind of get quiet and see what else comes out in my journal, sometimes I set intentions for the day, um, I pick my mint, I rub my mint, I smell it, that's my favorite smell, I pick some basil, I rub it up, I give it a smell, sometimes I'll eat a strawberry or a blueberry, whatever I'm growing. I'll watch, you know, a pea plant or a tomato flower slowly ripen and slowly turn into this fruit, which is unbelievable. Um, but I do it without my phone. I think it's really important to spend some time with plants in the morning without your phone. It gives you a chance to just disconnect. I mean, plant friends, sometimes I will literally just stare at a leaf and watch dew just drop off of the leaf. And I just let myself zone out. I let myself naturally wake up and it's just a beautiful practice that I can't recommend enough. Okay, this is one of my favorite planty corners of the apartment. I guess it's not really a corner, it's a wall. But this is our green wall. This has grown tremendously over the last three years of the apartment. Where this green wall was when we installed it and where it is now is unbelievable. The plants have started to shingle to the wall. It's like uncontrollable now. There's always a new, you know, kind of string of leaves, uh, stem of leaves that I need to start training. Um, and we have a separate video about how to train the plants to the wall if you're interested. Next to the green wall, I also have some prized plants. This is my Raphidophora tetrasperma. His name is Raffi. I don't name all my plants, but some special ones have special names. Raffi was sent to me by one of my plant friends that I made on the internet, Bethany. She saw that I really wanted one. She DM'd me. She offered to send me a cutting of hers, which is like ginormous. And she sent it to me and Raffi has just taken off 
And I have another video in my channel about propagating raffi because now I've paid that forward and sent a cutting of raffi to my plant friend Casey, who's been a longtime listener and plant friend of the show. So I like that raffi kind of is living on. Like there's now pieces of raffi in like three different states across the country, which is I think really cool. Okay, so now we're in my bedroom. Once again, we only have windows on this side. So as you can see, all the plants pretty much live here except for the grow shelf. Um, well, these plants are all a lot of cuttings that have grown into large plants. I have this um, Monstera, I think Peru is its nickname, from my friend Nick from Philly Foliage. Um, this was a tiny plant. I mean, this was a tiny cutting that I got that has like exploded with crazy growth. I used this little plant stand to try and like wrangle it. Um, I have my friend Leslie Halleck sent me this very special Sansevieria that's super rare and hard to find and it's probably doubled in size since she's given it to me. A Hoya that a listener showed up to a, you know the thing, all of these plants have a story behind them. Leslie sent me that Sansevieria. This plant, a listener showed up to the stage door of Cats and brought me a little cutting of his Hindu rope and it's doubled in size and I got to meet his whole family and he's this really awesome teenage kid who came and saw Cats, met me at the stage door, it was really sweet. Um, what other stories? We've got this lacy lady who just loves to not be watered and sit in the southern light. If anybody needs string of pearls recommendations that's what I've got for you um this was another copper spoon Callan Showy copper spoon I got it as a tiny cutting it since you know the original cutting has doubled in size and it's put off a bunch of other cuttings that I've rooted um this money tree was one of my first plants I ever bought at a Home Depot in the beginning of my the jade in my living room and this Pachira Aquatica this another story with cats one of the dressers, one of the women who put us in our spandex every day, I was wearing my plant lady shirt and she said, oh, I'm a plant lady too. She said, do you have a night blooming Ceres? And I said, no. And she said, well, I have one. It's as big as my whole um, corner. It's like as big as her. And the next day she brought me in a cutting of her night blooming Ceres, which I now have. I have no idea if it's gonna bloom ever, but it's huge. I mean, it's doubled in size since I brought it home. I had to take it on two airplanes to get it home. Um, this is a jade that is a cutting of another jade plant of an heirloom plant that I inherited from a friend. So the sweet thing about all these plants that I have, none of them are particularly fancy, but they all have really special stories. And so when I look at this plant, I think about that experience with this dresser, a complete stranger. We were able to connect about plants in somewhere in Kentucky, I think. I don't even remember what state we were in. Um, but all of these plants have stories about connection and deeper connection that really make me happy. And then in this corner, we have famous Figaro in the back. He's right under our Soltec light. He's so happy. His leaves are so huge. And then we have very unruly Monsteras. This Monstera, I'm embarrassed to show you, but I will. Out of transparency, plant friends, <laughs> this Monstera has grown so many roots <laughs> under its pot. I cannot keep these in their pots. I repot them and they grow out immediately. These Monstera, since I put them under the grow lights, they have grown the most insane aerial roots. This was a tiny cutting that I got at a plant swap. This was the cutting, these four leaves. And every time the cutting would grow, I would chop it off, I would root it, and then I would plant it back in the pot. And now I have this incredibly lush plant and the first cutting that I got had no uh, fenestrations, but as you can tell, the older leaves have, some of them have fenestrations and the plant is super happy. So happy that I need to repot it because that's super embarrassing, but you know what? Oh my God, look at this. I totally just ripped that off, but you know what? These monsteras root so easily, you can tuck this in the soil and I'm gonna stick this in the water and it'll grow some more roots. And then one other plant, my hardy Dracaena. I never, I always forget about it. I never water it. It is so forgiving to me. It has grown so tall. It takes the little light that it gets and it keeps on going. Um, 
and I inherited it from a friend. So when I was just starting out as a plant lady, a friend had to move quickly and she gave me 12 of her plants that I have cherished. I only killed one and that's one of them and it's been really fun to see that plant grow because I think when we got it, it was probably a foot shorter than it is now. So this is my famous grow shelf that I'm obsessed with and I have several YouTube videos about it so you can click the links to check them out. But I, this is a very low light area of my apartment which I have transformed into a highlight haven for so many happy plants because of these grow lights that I have installed. Um, a lot of them are some pileas that I got right as I was starting Bloom and Grow from friends that I have since propagated a lot of their babies and given. Um, several cutting scent, a beautiful oxalis that Farm One sent me during the pandemic, a little cactus Summer Rain Oaks gave me. This was that jade that I had previously mentioned. Ruby Red Begonia. I'm preparing some propagated cuttings for my plant friend that I'm about to send in the mail. Some semi-hydro experiments. Okay, so this is the technically darkest area of my apartment. It is more than 20 feet from the window. It is no light, no plant would live here. But I've turned it into, I've turned this little corner. So number one, I made this wallpaper. It's wrapping paper that I laminated and turned into wallpaper, DIY. Um, but because of the corner, I decided to use this Mod Sprout Grow House, which is super high light and create this extra highlight area of my apartment. And it's really nice because since all of my plants are up against the window, this was kind of a bummer area. And our kitchen, we cook here. We spend so much time in our kitchen. We're so lucky that our kitchen is formatted so beautifully for our tiny apartment that it's been really nice to have some plants near the sink so I can see them when I do the dishes. Okay, plant friends, you have seen all of the planty nooks in our apartment. We've told you all of our secrets. And now I just want to propose a toast to our first apartment together, the place where our love took deeper roots, grew more foliage, um, and Bloom and Grow was created here. I mean, I was a plant killer when we moved into this apartment, and this apartment is what made me become the plant lady that I am today and start Bloom and Grow Radio. So thank you, apartment. I love you. It's been a wild ride, and thank you, Billy, for being along for the journey Aww, with me. thank you, love. Cheers. Cheers. And don't forget, plant friends, keep, keep blooming, blooming and, and keep, keep growing. growing. <laughs> <laughs> Doom 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 do